Hi again, everyone. I'm Ollie Matthews. This is the Narcissistic Resistance, and this resistance video is sponsored by contribution from Susan, and here is her story. Dear Ollie, I've been wanting to write to you about my narc mom who died four years ago at age 87. I started formulating my story in my mind about the main points I wanted to share, but then your mother died. <clears throat> I saw the turmoil you were in and decided it wasn't the time to pile on to your own memories. Eh, it was all right. It still is. But in a recent video, one of your contributors was waiting for their narc mother to die for it all to be over. And you laughed and said, sorry, but even after death, the anger goes on. I knew at that moment it was time to write my story. I unfortunately have been involved with a number of to toxic narcs in my life. But right now I need to share the one that has made her way back in my thoughts with pain, memories, and anger that I thought I had left behind. Yes, I need to talk about the one that is dead. This is something I learned, man. You know, the one that really did it to you when they die. The... It puts a closure on their life because now you have it. From point A, from the time they broke you to the time they died. Now you got your case study. Now here it is. Boom. It's over. There it is. The time from the time they broke you till the time they drop dead. When we get closure, our closure through death is in closure. It's over. It's closure on that amount of abuse from that person. There it is. It's over. There. Done. So now here's my time frame. Here's my time frame that I got to deal with now. Now that it's over. From the time they broke you to the time they die. I unfortunately have been... I'm sorry. I was born into an absolute nightmare with two older brothers and then nine and ten years later, two more brothers were born. Most of... Most all of my memories of my childhood of my mother are filled with her being angry, physically and verbally abusive to me and my two older brothers, especially the eldest, but that is a story for another day. I lied to all my friends and told them I was adopted and she was my evil stepmother. I was so ashamed to have this horrible bitch as my real mother. She would go to my school and throw fits. She would be hateful to strangers and sometimes be very rude to people at church, even her so-called friends. She was second generation Jehovah's Witness. <laughs> I knew some Jehovah's Witnesses in town and they all live chaotic life. Like their mothers are like demons. Demons. And they took pleasure. Here, here's the thing I notice about Jehovah's Witness mothers. They took pleasure in having their kids excluded from everything. Christmas, Halloween, birthday, all of it. They enjoy it. They enjoy it. I really think Jehovah's Witness is, is, is the whole religion only, only exists at this point to enact revenge on your children for your own shitty childhood. I'm telling that's what it is. Under the guise of, of, of God or religion or bullshit. To me, all Jehovah's Witness is, is a means to fuck up your, chil your, your child's childhood. Is to fuck up your own children's entire childhood. They take pleasure in excluding their children from all these events. They like it. She was second generation Jehovah's Witness who used the church and Bible for the excuse to take out her anger on us kids. Spare the rod, spoil the child. She always said things like, I'm going to put the fear of God into you. Or this hurts me more than it hurts you. It's all such bullshit. They're such phonies, those Jehovah. They are such phonies. They're such phonies. While she was grabbing anything possible within reach to hit us with, hairbrushes, belts, switches, 
And of course, how lucky for her, their doctrines on holidays and birthdays meant she never once required to buy us kids one single gift our entire childhood. <clears throat> there you go. She would go to our school on the first day every year to meet with the principal and our teachers and tell them we were not allowed to stand for the morning Pledge of Allegiance, the national anthem, or participate in any school activity involving the holidays. She would use this opportunity to preach to them and totally embarrass us. Of course, at that time, every single holiday was used by the teachers to make holiday stuff for art, teach us holiday songs for music, etc., I spent probably half my elementary years in the principal's office because I was not allowed to participate in activities, and that's how they want it. That is exactly how I saw it as well. The you, they use it, they take pleasure in excluding their children. They like it. It's an excuse to ruin their, ch their, their child's childhoods. That's why they do it. You're not going to have it better than me, and I'm going to I'm going to use religion, this stupid religion, to do it. We were really good kids, truly good, yet she would scream and yell at us kids. We did most of the yard work and housework while she talked on the phone most of the day. We were expected to be perfect little adults. We were expected to sit in church two times a week for hours and never make a sound or move. Sit every night while she taught us the Bible and how Armageddon was coming any day and how we needed to mind her and not even have an evil thought because God knows everything. And if we were bad, we were going to die. As a tiny child, I learned all about the evils of fornication, masturbation, homosexuality, sodomy. You name it, I knew all about it at five years old. She, and that's sexual abuse. I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. And you know what? What you see, what's going on with the Pope and the Catholic Church and these fucking religions, I mean, they're out of control. All of them. All of them. It's all about abuse. It's always been about abuse. And I'm not anti, I'm not anti God. I'm not saying there's no God. I'm not saying any of that. What I'm saying is these fucking religions, every single one of them are bullshit. All of them. All of them. You don't need to go to a magic house to have a spiritual relationship with God. You don't have to give them money. You don't have to get on your knees. You don't have to do any of that. You don't have to do ritualistic chants. None of it. None of it. God isn't telling you to go and get a fucking switch and beat the shit out of a five-year-old. God ain't telling you to do that. She was especially hateful to my father, who I remembered as such a sweet, loving man. She would drive him away over and over, and yet he would keep returning for reasons I didn't know then. And I noticed this about most Jehovah's Witnesses. They were usually single women. All the Jehovah's Witnesses that I knew that were in my town or in my area, they were always single women. Husbands couldn't handle it. It was always women going door to door. It was always women. He would leave for months at a time and we would find any reason he could to escape the house. He would come home as late as he could to try to avoid the wrath. Of course she was the victim. Our dad was just a horrible man. I remember her being so bitter and angry to us kids all day. As soon as my dad walked in, she would turn all, her, all of her venom on him. I would think to myself, Mom, don't do this. You're driving him away. And I was so little, but I understood. What I didn't understand was why he would leave us kids with this horrible woman. By the time I was eight years old, they were on their way to divorce and my mother got pregnant, which I was later told, which I was later told by her was all my fault. How are you going through a divorce and got, she got pregnant by your dad or by someone else? I mean, like, what, what is this? And it's your fault. I was leaving for school one day and my dad showed up and I let him in. She told me he raped her and got her pregnant. Oh, what a... Ugh. Oh, God. 
he wanted to get kept leaving wanted to get rid of her but wants to rape her i mean come on dude come on come on this is what they do this is what they do What the hell kind of mother tells her child this? So they get back together, have another baby 15 months later, but my dad was more distant than ever. So she got remarried to a guy who raped her. Got back together. I mean, come on. Finally, after years of fighting, yelling, screaming in our little house, they divorced. It was such a relief to me. My dad would come around once in a while to take my two younger brothers to the park or to his house. He taught me to drive, and then one Saturday, when he was supposed to arrive, he didn't show, and we rarely ever saw him again. I was so hurt being the only girl. He was always sweet to me, and he was my safe split place, although I really didn't get to spend much time with him in my life. Our mom explained to us what a no good piece of shit he was, how he let two little boys sitting sitting there waiting for them with their little bags packed and he never called or came. How is he so selfish the way he had always been to her all these years? How doesn't he care about us? How is he so self-centered and all he wants are whores and how she knows he is sleeping with any woman he can find, blah, blah, blah. And I'm sure she made it up. I'm sure she put your brothers out there and set that all up. And there's a story behind all of this. Okay? Sounds like typical, typical mother manipulation. I had no reason to disbelieve her. After all, he could have contact. He could have had contact with me, especially after I got out of that hellhole. So moving on, I basically went no contact with her the day I turned 18 in 1975. I moved out of the house and went to live with an older female friend of mine who let me stay with her until I got on my feet. I still had a little contact so I could see my little brothers, one of which I took in when he was 16 because of the conflicts he was having with her. She would also try to reel me back in every few years so she could see her grandchildren or whatever. I would let her back into my life. She would be so sweet, but just after a few weeks, I would have to go no contact again because she was so toxful and hateful to me. And there's the pattern every time. They reel you back in and then they come back and they be their real self again. <clears throat> Years and years go by. My oldest brother has a five-year battle with colon cancer and dies. My mom starts getting older and can't live alone, so the youngest, the golden child, takes an extended leave from his job and moves back home to care for her. I am now living 2,000 miles away, and I'm constantly being guilted about my lack of caring. Whatever, it's true. I didn't care. Nor should you. Nor should you. Remember, even though I know she's dead already and how this started had changes your feelings. <sighs> Death and sickness do not absolve this. They don't absolve everything you've talked about thus far. None of it. You have nothing to be guilted over. Two years passed and my next eldest brother, John, calls me. He also left at 18 and went totally no contact with mom and the oldest narc bitter brother. But once in a while, he would call me and we would talk for hours. And we loved each other, but we were so separated by pain of childhood and miles, we, could ha we hardly had any contact. To tell me he is... He, to tell me he's in a hospice in Arizona and he too is dying of colon cancer. It was a Friday night. He begged me to come see him one last time and yes, I wanted to with all my heart. I loved him. I booked my flight for Monday afternoon and was called by the hospice Monday morning to tell me John had died that morning. I was devastated and then Narc Mom dies a week later. John and my dad seemed to have a close relationship when we were kids, and I had heard with bitterness from my mom that John had been in their town and visited our dad, but not her. So I made a decision to try and track down my dad to let him know about John. It was difficult and was almost ready to give up when I found him. 
I talked to him on the phone and told him about John and mom and we cried and he told me he loved me and wanted to meet up with me. A few weeks later, I was able to arrange a lunch in a restaurant with him and his wife and stepson. I was so... And your stepbrother. Not only his stepson, your stepbrother. I was so scared and full of anxiety for days before the meeting. I was staying with my son and his friend was over the night before and I was carrying on about how could this man abandon us and now he's 86 years old. What does he want of me? I'm crying in a mess. My son's friend said, you don't know what your mother told him. My mother was like yours. My dad didn't know she was abusing us because when he got home, she was okay with the kids. Don't assume anything with a narcissist. It was the first time I ever thought about her being a narc. I really didn't know anything about them. I just thought my dad was mean to her, cheated on her, and made her bitter and angry. But it hit me. Maybe it's true. He didn't know. When he arrives home, she directed her anger towards him. Okay, I'll give him the benefit of the doubt and be kind. He had to know something. He had to know her nature. You know, maybe he lied to himself and said it would be better if he wasn't around, but I don't know how well he could possibly hide that type of anger towards anyone because it seems like your mother had it at everyone, including her own children. I'm sure there's times she displayed it in front of him and you're not even remembering towards you. She was mean to you guys in front of him and you don't even realize. <clears throat> Lunch went okay. They invited me to their home to visit. So six months later, I flew to Houston and spent a glorious week. I told him I had questions and he said, ask me anything you want. I asked him why he abandoned us. He told me he didn't. That the Saturday before he went no contact, he had dropped my little brothers off, and as he was walking in the door to his house, the phone was ringing. It was my mom. <clears throat> she said that your kids never wanted to ever see you again, especially your daughter. Don't ever come around again. I went crazy. I shook my hands toward the sky and called her a fucking bitch. I screamed, how could you do this to us, you evil, evil woman? My dad got upset and told me to stop and wrapped, his arm, wrapped me in his arms. We cried and I told him she had lied to him. It wasn't true. He told me that was why he never tried to contact me or my brothers. I asked him why he had left us with that bitch and he was shocked and asked what I meant. I told him about the abuse, especially bad on the oldest and he was truly in shock. She had portrayed herself as the perfect mother. He thought that my oldest brother was her pride and joy and that she babied him. He started crying. He had thought all of her anger towards him and he was she he had thought all of her anger was towards him and he actually only kept coming back to her for us kids. I told him it was funny because people always said to me that I must be spoiled being the only girl in the family. Because I certainly wasn't spoiled and in fact, I always felt she was especially hard on me and got the feeling she was jealous of me for some reason. And they always are. They always are. She used that religion. She used, you know, it's possible <clears throat> your mother hoovered your father and knowing he was weak-minded like that. And back then, I mean... You're talking, this is talking back in the 70s, I'm imagining. Different time. Different time. He immediately said that she was jealous of me and she would get mad when he tried to hold me or spend time with me when I was little. So she drove him off out of jealousy of you, is what it seems like. He didn't see it. This is what these women do. They poison their relationship with the fathers. And the lies go on for decades and decades and decades. I 
Later that night, my stepmom told me that over the years, <clears throat> she would find him crying alone. She said it was always about the pain of not having his children. She told me he has no happiness and has lived with pain in his heart all his years. Yeah, Charlene can tell you something about that as well. They were married for 38 years, so I would think she would know. She told me that there was a day, there was the day my mom called to say we didn't want to be around him anymore, and she said my dad went into a depression, and that lasted for many, many years. Well, I actually got my daughter to say those words to me, so... <sighs> My dad died less than a year later, five days before he was to come visit me for Christmas. I got to see him three times and talk to him on the phone every week. Yep, that bitch, that evil bitch separated me from my father for basically my entire life. 59 years without the man who loved me, who I loved, and my poor brothers, what can I say? Three were dead and never knew the truth. I am now left in a horrible place because the bitch is dead. I can't vent my anger to her. I can't let her know I know. I can't slap her in the face. She has hurt me and I didn't even find out how bad it was until she was dead. The final fuck you to me. <clears throat> ha. Any idea how to get over this anger? It's been a year and a half since dad died. How do I let this go? Do I hire a psychic to contact her, contact her so I can say my piece? No, I don't think. I don't think that's a great idea. Maybe writing this letter to you will help. I don't know. All I could say is the narc continues to hurt, to hurt and destroy even after their death. I hate to be the bearer of bad news. I really do. But I wasn't prepared and I wish I had known. Death doesn't end it. May we find peace and love in our lives. Thank you, Ollie, for hearing me out. I really don't expect you to figure this one out for me. Susan. You know, like I said at the beginning here, Susan. You got a full caption of her life now. And... The problem is what I what I have found here, you know, in the month and a half since my mother died. You get more even more clarity after they're dead. It's like you have to question, do you ever really go no contact with these people? Because even after my mother died, now 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 my mother died, and now you got all these other this 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 other shit that just keeps coming, this anger that just keeps flooding in, the rage of it all. I've said this over and over and over again. Okay. There's no cure for this. There's no magic pill. There's no one day we're going to wake up and it's all going to be fine. It's never going to happen. It's never going to happen. 59 years you were separated from your father. Even longer than that going through the abuse. So for over six decades of abuse from that woman. Six decades. Decades of abuse from that woman. You are not going to get past that in four years. Not when the effects of their abuse, you know, they, they live past the problem, you know, the effect. The effects of their abuse outlives them. <clears throat> it's amazing the parallels, how. Of our stories, you know, 
your brother and mother die within basically days of each other. My mother and her sister die within days of each other. It goes to show you, man, they, 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 that, 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 that seed that they plant in you, it sticks with you for life. Toxic, toxic, toxic. And even if you get away from them like your brothers did, still flare up. They still flare up on you. And when you add in the, the pleasure see what I get and I'm assuming you're another black female I could I could be wrong on that but I'm um, the way it's written in the Jehovah's Witness stuff I'm assuming you're probably another you're probably a, a black female and we're dealing with another another angry black mother you know which is <clears throat> let's face it what I was basically raised by you know which is why I have so many issues with my mother is the same thing. My mother derived just from her. She didn't even need religion to do it. Because what my mother would do, she, she, she gained pleasure out of it. She enjoyed doing everything she was doing. She did it for power because she wanted to be just like her mother. She wanted that power. She liked it. She liked it. That's why your mother used the Jehovah, even though she was second generation, I mean, obviously this goes on for generations in your family. But even before I got to that point, I knew it. I knew that these Jehovah, because this is what I used to see, the parents enjoyed watching their children suffer. They enjoy it. You don't get over that. You don't get over Knowing and feeling and living through your own mother. Enjoying your su causing and enjoying your suffering. Taking pleasure. There's no getting over that. There's no, and you deserve that anger. I deserve every right to that anger. I deserve, honestly, if I wanted to, and I've never done anything like this. If I wanted to take my refrigerator and throw it out through my fucking window every day to, to, to alleviate my rage... That's the that's the level we're all aggrieved. You can't do that. How you get back at these people, how you alleviate, not even get back, how you alleviate, how you deal with this anger is to expose them, is to talk about them, is to tell them, this is who they were, this is what they did, and you let them know, and you let them know publicly, and you let them know what they did, it isn't even unique. You're not even unique, you're not even special. You're like millions of other narcissistic sociopaths out there who take pleasure in their children's suffering. Pleasure. And then hide behind some phony religion so i hope that helps susan thank you so much for your contribution and your story i really appreciate it thank you to everybody watching please leave any opinions or advice in the comment section below and again if you want your story read on the channel you have a topic you'd like me to cover a narcissist you'd like to expose you'd like to set up skype a phone call have a private video made or a facebook live chat or you'd like to sponsor a video like this for someone who needs help and can't afford it or just make a contribution to the channel in general to keep it supported, growing, and successful. Because this channel survives 100% on contributions from all of you guys. Without you, all of this goes away. So if you like what you see here and you want to see more videos like this, you know what to do with the PayPal and email links in the description box. Also, please like and share this video wherever you can. Subscribe to my channel if you haven't. And be sure to click the subscription bell to be notified of all my video uploads. I'm Ollie Matthews. This has been The Narcissistic Resistance. Take care.